are live. Cool. So welcome everyone to July's Dig Deeper session. Um, for those of you who are new, my name is Justine. I'm a product marketer here at User Gems. And if you're not new here, welcome to our new webinar platform called SQL. Um, we're really excited to start hosting on this platform. Moving forward, every session will be on SQL. So if you registered for any sessions in the future, um, your links will change, but we've already sent out some comments about that. Um, so this week or this month is really exciting. I have Jakob here from our machine learning team. He's going to be talking about Gem AI and where AI lives in our platform. Um, but first things first, I do wanna do a quick round of product updates just so everyone's in the loop. Um, but the majority of this time is going to be around AI. Um, just some housekeeping items. This will be uh, recorded. It will be available to watch on replay on our site and you'll get a sent a recording session of this. Um, and please, please, please ask questions in the chat. So there's a chat box, I believe on your right hand side. Um, we will be monitoring the chat as we go along. Jakob will be answering questions. So as they come up, please share them and we will try to cover them in the session. So moving right along here, just on some quick product updates. Um, we had two really big launches in the last month. So uh, we did release our signal library. Um, so user gem signal platform. And then we just launched a new buyer signal called champion referrals, um, along with a new playbook for um, some of your sales teams. So I'll start with the signal platform. Um, we are now hosting multiple signals, which you can then integrate your people signals that you've already had. So things like past champions and new hires and promotions, you can combine that now with additional signals. So things like intent or website visitors. So if you're interested in that, please talk to your CSM. We'll be able to start thinking about which buyer signals you wanted to start integrating to the platform. Um, more importantly though, we did launch our own native signal yesterday, champion referrals. Um, so we're gonna do a full session on champion referrals during this Dig Deeper in August. So if you're interested in learning more about how to leverage your current customers and create pipeline from that using our automated workflows within our platform, join August Dig Deeper session, or you can also reach out to your customer success rep today and we can set you up with a demo. Basically what we're doing here is we are monitoring which current customers have worked at your target accounts in the past, and then we'll automate a workflow that matches both your SDR on the target account and your customer success rep on the customer account. And then we can generate outreach to the champion directly from Slack or directly from whatever sales engagement platform that you have. The last update before I hand it over to Jakob is a new playbook that we released from our CS team. Um, so basically what we've done here is we've released a playbook in our playbook library that will automatically assign or reassign gems into an automated sequence if no one from your sales team has acted them within 15 days. Um, so really what we've noticed here is the longer that it takes a rep to action a user gems leader contact, um, the less likely it is to convert. So in order to mitigate that, we've created this new automated playbook and we've also implemented some logic to be able to take a gem out of a manual sequence and place them into this automated sequence just so they are still being reached out to um, if the rep's not able to get to them. Yes, the, the playbook will, is actually in your um, admin dashboard. Um, so if you go under your playbooks there, you can sync it directly over to Outreach or Sales Loft. Um, if you don't have Outreach or Sales Loft, you can reach out to your CSM and we can get you like a digital copy of it and you can upload it that way. All right, so that's it for the product updates. Um, if you have any additional questions, throw them in the chat. I will answer them if they're product related. If you have any AI questions, continue to throw them in the chat and we will answer those live. But I will now pass it over to Jakob to continue talking about Gem AI. All right, let me just share my screen. Does it work? Um, Let's see, still waiting for it. I can always share too. Okay, otherwise, yeah, please share. 
Sure. All right, can you see it? Yes, perfect. Thank you, Justine. So, um, yeah, thank, thank you, Justine, for the introduction. So my name is Jakob Steinbauer. Um, I'm the senior data scientist here at UserGems, and um, despite my title, my responsibilities here basically cover everything from our data analytics uh, initiatives, but also like machine learning and, and most recently, um, uh, generative AI initiatives. And from the very beginning, uh, UserGems has had a, a very strong focus on data analytics, but it's, it's mostly been over the last couple of years that we really started investing in our machine learning and AI capabilities. And since then, um, it's, it's been super exciting for me and my team to um, see our developments being adopted in our product and uh, improving the outcomes for our customers and also like uh, our old, own sales team, who are the first one typically who use our, um, our developments. And in this presentation, um, I will cover the, what we call the three pillars of, of user gems AI, gem AI, the first one being identify. Um, where, which is basically about identifying the ideal customer uh, profile and the target buyer persona, which we then use to find them and to, to create lists of, of relevant customers, target customers, but also target uh, prospects. Uh, the second pillar is about prioritization. So <clears throat> um, when we have these huge lists, we need to prioritize the companies and the prospects such that our sales teams, uh, they can reach out to them in the most efficient manner. And then finally, the last pillar is about actions. So <clears throat> um, after we identified which company and which prospect we want to reach out to, we also want to help the sales uh, the salesperson uh, to reach out to them as efficiently as, uh, as possible. And to that end, uh, we also focused on gener generated personalized messages for each of the prospects based on their signals, relationships, and uh, also the company context. But let's start with the with first of these pillars, so the buyer persona and the ICP. So as I said, the goal is basically um, to define those as well as possible such that we can generate re relevant lists of companies, target companies, and target prospects that uh, we can reach out to uh, later on. And actually, for quite some time in the, in the web app, we had some editor which allowed um, the users to directly adjust the, their, their ideal buyer persona and, and customer profile. The idea, of course, being that typically um, B2B uh, companies, they, know, they should know best who their perfect uh, buyer persona and, and customer profile is. Unfortunately, however, <laughs> we experience that this is not always the case, as you can imagine, and people don't necessarily always know exactly who they should best reach out to. And for this reason, we introduced what we call the AI suggestions, where based on the statistical analysis on the data that our customers give us, we analyze and suggest the best categories that they should add in their, uh, in their persona and ICP definitions. And <clears throat> yes, you're already at the next slide. Um, so um, in, in order to just having these, these suggestions might seem like as a bit of a black box. That's why we also added some visualizations um, where we visualize the decisions of that our system gives by showing, um, for instance, the, the frequency of the customers um, that our users have in a certain category. I mean, here I'm just showing uh, the industry, but but this also covers some other uh, categories like company size, um, company location, etc. Um, we also show um, the likelihood that a company of a specific category is to convert to become a customer. And the, the goal of these visualizations is basically just to help understand the decisions that our system gives and the recommendations that our system gives. But well, at the end, um, even with the buyer persona and the ICP uh, being perfectly um, adjusted, um, we typically still end up with a huge list of potential target uh, companies and prospects. Like speaking for user terms, for instance, uh, I'm talking tens of thousands of potential target companies and God knows how many uh, prospects. So, um, we need an efficient way 
to, to prioritize them. And that brings us to the next topic. Okay, there seems to be a, a, a short lag between what I'm seeing and when you're, when you're switching, but never mind. Um, right, um, that's the prioritization is actually something that we spent quite a lot of, of effort over the last uh, two or so years to, to, to really get that right. And in a nutshell, um, what we're doing in the user channels web app is to prioritize prospects and accounts um, based on how likely they are to convert such that afterwards we can easily add them to workflows. And <clears throat> the way we do that is by taking us a signals first approach. So um, you, you also see this quite prominently uh, in, in our web app that um, we always show the signals that are mentioned uh, that, that we found for one specific user and, and company. And the reason for this is first of all, of course, um, that these signals are typically quite, uh, great indications of who might be a, a, a good potential customer to reach out to. Uh, but not only that, it's also that these signals typically uh, make good conversation starters. And you see how we leverage that later on when we talk about AI messaging. But <clears throat> um, let's go to the next slide. Right. So when we talk about signals, we're typically differentiating between, first of all, signals of individual prospects. Those include like past relationships, new hires, promotions. It could also be things like uh, social media posts uh, and of course, uh, company specific uh, signals. For instance, did the company receive any recent funding? Are they hiring? Or maybe one thing that's also quite interesting, do they have competitors which are already our customers? And of course, there's many more. And if you go to the next slide. And um, it's also, in many cases, the value of these signals can also be crossed in a quite intuitive manner. If we take, for instance, new hire, um, it's clear that if, if a person recently started a new position at a new company, they, first of all, they might have budget to spend, they might also not be biased by old processes or, or tools that the company is using. And <clears throat> they might also be more proactive to make good first impression. And <clears throat> could, could you go to the next slide? Thanks. And for many of these signals, um, we could also confirm these, um, these, these signal values empirically. So here, for instance, Again, you see for, uh, for the new hire signal, uh, the influence that reaching out to a prospect that recently changed his job has on the opportunity creation rate. And indeed, the, the results that we found, find here are actually quite remarkable, uh, with the opportunity creation rate being up to like two and a half times higher for um, decision makers that have been reached out to within the first three months uh, as compared to when reaching out to them after one year. And <clears throat> next, next slide. Right. And well, you might say this is all nice and, and interesting, but it's also quite general. So what about what about value that these signals have for my product? And and it's true that the value of most signals uh, depends quite substantially on the user and the product. And if we go to the next slide, we see that there's also there's also another problem. And that is that so far we only looked at the signals in an isolated manner. But in reality, this will not really work out because it's clear that um, the, the value of a signal will strongly depend on the context it's in. Like we talked about new hires before. If you think about new hires, of course, the value of the signal will depend on, for instance, the, senior, uh, the seniority of that the prospect takes in a new company or the function of the position that he will take in a new company. It will also depend on loads of company characteristics, like for instance, the size of the company and the industry. I mean, already the seniority of, of some position, um, or the interpretation of the seniority of some position strongly depends on whether it's a big company or a small company. So these are all things that need to be taken into account if we really want to talk about signal value in, in a proper in a proper sense. 
And um, in the next slide, we, we I will talk about this, how we uh, try to solve this problem at UserGems. Um, and at UserGems, to to put all to solve all of these problems at once, what we did was we developed a framework that allows us to uh, to train custom specific machine le learning models on the sales data of our users. This has the advantage that it allows us to prioritize prospects and companies based on the custom specific signal values, so not just some generic values. And then we can also custom, uh, give the customized recommendations based on, this, based on these rankings. And it also takes into account um, all of the different bias signals that we have. It also takes into account the company characteristics and also the target company characteristics. And um, but at this point, um, you might also think, okay, you're we're training models on the sales data of um, of our past interaction. What about data safety? And uh, at this point, let me quickly uh, say a couple of words about that. So first of all, when we train our our customer specific models. Uh, no sensitive personal data is, is ever used. Like we, we're never using names, email addresses, uh, addresses, etc. cetera. Uh, also like other information that, that might be critical, like job titles, company descriptions, et cetera, they're all anonymized and also only used in an anonymized way. And um, finally, uh, when we create our customer specific models, they're basically derived from some general model that we create with user gems. But your your uh, sales data uh, will only be used to train a model for your company and your sales data will never be used for for any other model that will be used by any other company um, at this point maybe there are, there are some questions yeah any any other questions that we have for Yaka before we transition into AI messaging. This has been great, by the way. This is a lot of stuff that I actually didn't even know. Um, but I will say that every time, every time we get some of these research really digest from our machine learning team, especially like the most likely to convert, um, it's super interesting. Um, I don't think a lot of people really go through this data. So I appreciate you sharing it. All right. But I don't know if, if there's no more questions. Yeah, we can go into messaging. You can go into messaging. Yeah, right. Because um, now basically what we have is uh, we we generated a list of, of potentially relevant companies and prospects that we could reach out to. And we use machine learning um, to, to rank them based on signal value in a customized way. Uh, but now, of course, we also want to reach out to them in an efficient way. and uh, one approach that, that is becoming ever more popular, of course, is AI email messaging. And as you probably all know, uh, just recently there's been there's ever more companies specializing in, in that kind of field with all kinds of different approaches. But um, if we go to the next slide, if, if you ever tried out some of these tools, um, Typically, you also realize quite quickly that most of them have some very typical common problems. Like one common problem is that personal uh, personalized content is often not really relevant, or sometimes in the worst case, it's even wrong. Like the model is hallucinating. Another thing that that I personally also see quite often is that messages just sound kind of AI generated, like AI ish, and <clears throat> to to mitigate these problems, if you go to the next slide, um, we developed our own AI uh, messaging tool of user gems, um, again, using a signals first approach. And the idea is now that um, we build our final messages based on signal-based message snippets, which allows us to gain maximal control over the message generation, and which also ensures that they are relevant because we know that the signals themselves are relevant. 
We also use personalization, but we try to focus personalization uh, mostly on where it has the biggest impact, which in our experience is mostly the sales point where we want to be as specific and targeted as possible. And finally, this last point is less about uh, the message generation itself, but about the workflows. We only want to reach out if we actually found some sales relevant signals. Okay, but how does this all look like in practice? So here you see a screenshot of our AI messaging tool as it's already available in, in our web app. And what you see is, if I just quickly walk you through it, on the left side is you see the, the final message that has been generated. And on the, on the right side, first of all, you see the different signals that have been found for this specific prospect. Um, you might also see how these how these signals and the, the snippets that have been generated from them are incorporated in the final message. And <clears throat> uh, at, at the bottom, you also see, uh, see something that says sales pitch and tone. Um, basically, everything that you see here on the right side, so including, first of all, the sales pitch and tone generation, but also the signal generation can be, conf can be custom configured by managers and reps. Um, this, this, allows, this allows you to, to gain maximum control over the, the tone, but also like the contents and the way, for instance, that the sales pitch will be, um, will, will be targeted to specific um, prospects that we want to reach out to. And <clears throat> here, for instance, if we look at the next slide, you see how this looks like for user gems. Yeah, thanks. Um, this is how how we edited um, how we edited the, the configuration for for the sales pitch, and <clears throat> this the, the contents of this is actually something that if we have new user, first of all this will be generated automatically, um, but but it, we also allow the users to adapt what they see here in order to ensure that they get the best results. And of course, the same thing can also be done for the configurations of all of, this, uh, all of the signals. So you can adjust um, the prompts and also the tones of the signals. All right, but there's lots of other things that, that I could talk about here, and I don't want to extend this too much. So um, yeah, thanks a lot for your interest. And um, if there's any more questions, I'm happy to take them now. Yeah, we had one about outreach, um, and I'm not sure if you know the answer to this, but I, they're asking if they need a custom field in outreach to receive the Gen AI content. content. I remember it being a custom variable, but I don't remember it needing to be a field. Um, yeah, it's a custom variable, even though, I mean, I'm not an outreach expert, so you would probably have to direct this question to a product team. Yeah, um, but I will give like a quick um, quick plug on the email, the AI email messaging. Um, I am an AI email messaging hater um, and I really like ours. I think ours is really good um, only, only because of the fact that we use signals um, to generate all of the AI messaging. Um, so we are very careful, um, but also it's really meant to, to not be like blasted out in my opinion. I think it's more to save our ADR team's time um, having to go research a bunch of signals, we have it there in the message for them. Right, right. I think this is the most important thing because after all, um, we spent lots of time optimizing the, the message generation itself. But of course, at the end, you can never be sure that uh, what you get is, is perfect. But the most important thing is exactly what you said, to have the relevant information all at one place such that even if you might not be uh, happy with, with the specific formulation, you could just change that and then you still have the, the relevant content. You don't have to go to the web and, and search for the signals yourself. Yeah, um, I saw Greg was asking some questions. Um, Greg, let me know. I will say this does right now work in our app, um, but specifically is currently integrated with outreach. Um, so if you have outreach, it will be, um, probably a little bit better of an experience if you wanted the reps to work out of there. Um, 
but we do also offer this in our app too. If you wanted a few reps to try it out in app too. All right. Um, all right. There's no more questions. So I will ask you a question, which is, um, what are you working on now? Like what is kind of like the next step that you can share publicly? even if it's not like a true feature? Like, what are you guys interested in, in looking up? Right, right. Um, yeah. W one thing that, that we're currently working on and which will probably also occupy us for, for the next um, couple of weeks is uh, we're investigating on like how to optimize the cadence of, of different, like of sending a sequence of different emails based on the signals that we have available. So. Basically, first of all, we, we talked a lot about like signal value, but we, we talked about it in a more or less static way. Now, when we also think about, when we also take email generation and outreach into account, uh, we have to think about it in a dynamic way. And <clears throat> so there's quite a lot of potential for optimization. Like um, if, if you have several signals for one prospect at one company at hand, like which ones do you pick first? Uh, should you uh, should you use all of them together? I mean, typically, just using signals gives good results. But what we're interested in is like, how can we actually optimize this? Um, do you have any first first thoughts? Or we're still like in early stages. I mean, um, the the first approach that we're using is is rather a practical approach, which is that. Some of these signals um, are kind of dynamic or time dependent. Like we were talking about new hires, for instance, it's clear that um, if you have something like that, you should reach out to this person as soon as possible, you should not wait. And then there, there's other signals like um, company competitors, for instance, which I also mentioned, which are kind of static. So you don't, you're not pressed to using this right away. So like um, the first obvious approach is <clears throat> Um, to use the, the signals that are most uh, most urgent first, independently of whether they might be a bit less or more important, and then use the static ones afterwards. But for instance, one thing um, that we're currently testing out is, does it make more sense to, if you have this case, for instance, to combine the signals, and <clears throat> then, for instance, in the first step, um, create a message using um, some job change um, snippet and the, the, the customer competitor snippet, or does it make more sense to keep them apart and then always make sure that what, what you send to, to a prospect is completely new. So, and currently what we're doing is like testing out um, what kind of impact the, 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 full, um, the different options have. And another thing that is, that is, that is, um, constantly ongoing is like, of course, we're also using this internally. So there's like a, a constant feedback loop where we're evaluating the quality of the messages that we're generating. Exciting stuff. Awesome. Well, um, Jakob, thank you so much for joining this month's Dig Deeper. Um, this was awesome. I'm super excited to, to share this with everyone. But um, just so everyone knows, these are on the third Thursday of every month. Um, so please catch us next month. We're trying to talk about champion referrals. No, thanks a lot for the invitation, Justine. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, everyone.